Nothing good in theaters this week, so we stay at home and cuddled and watched Extraction on Netflix. No! Hey, it's the fourth act. I'm what? Alex it's us! Phil, and, and we talk, we're talking about Extraction because, because we said we would. That's pretty much why yep. we're doing it. Yep. Ground rules. We each have three points. We're now going to take turns going back and forth. If we agree with each other, we get a, uh, a target. I got like a sniper target. No. Maybe with each other we get uh, the, the Taj Mahal above our heads. It takes place in India. That's no. appropriate. Uh, newspaper above our heads. Like extra, extra, read all about it. Extraction, extra, da. No, I'd rather do the bullseye. Fine. <laughs> we disagree, we get a red X. Mm. First scene in this movie is clearly a scene taken from later on in the movie. I don't understand why it's there. It's just Chris Hemsworth on a bridge just yeah. looks like you got the shit kicked out of him. Why put that scene in the beginning of the movie? Yeah, it does that thing where it starts at the end and then it's like, how did we end up here, right? Yeah. Um, may as well just rewind back through the whole movie. I know what you're thinking. Why is that incredibly handsome hedgehog being chased by a madman with a mustache from the Civil War? We're unworthy! It served no narrative purpose in this movie. You had no new context once you got there at the end of the movie. Uh, the person who shot him was just a guy, so that had no meaning. It didn't matter. I immediately started caring less, and that, that's a bad side for a movie. Yeah, I agree. It feels like this movie is constantly trying to bite off more than it could chew. It could have been a great vehicle for Chris Hemsworth to just be a badass and go about his badassery. Ooh. But especially in the character beats, I feel like it's trying too hard. If this was just meant to have fun, if this was a fun movie, I think it could have worked way better. But instead it's bogged down with uh, very poor attempts at character development. And they were clearly going for some kind of character gut punch or moment. And I didn't care. That was not its wheelhouse. It, it doesn't, I had no conduit into this movie. I was bored of the characters. Sorry. Nope, I'm awake. It feels like just another film in Netflix's wheelhouse to be taken seriously as a studio, which I, I applaud them for doing that, but it, it's, it falls flat, so I agree. I feel like this movie has too much action. It's a one hour and 55 minute movie, and I feel like there's just action scenes oozing out of the screen for an hour and 40 minutes of that. I don't think that there's too much action. I just think that I'm not connected to the movie to care about the action. I'm not connected to the movie either, but I'm seeing explosions and I'm seeing no, I get shootouts. What you're There's a car chase sequence and the camera is in the back seat and you're in the car with Chris Hemsworth. Fantastic sequence. It's a really cool sequence. But then it just keeps going and he's in a building and he's shooting and shooting and then he falls and he falls into the street. The I'm so tired chase, of people the shooting at people. The car chase scene is fantastic. It's competently made action. But the thing is I've, I've seen that now. I've seen those tracking shots with the hidden cuts and I'm more drawn to the ones where I'm tied to it because of a character, because of a theme. Roma had it because it was woven into the DNA of the environment, feeling the fragility of life. 1917 was obviously a race against the clock. This one is just to look cool. That's fine, but it, there's so much of it. There's so much explosions. There's so much gunshots. I don't think that's inherently something wrong, though. I think there's too much of it. Just look at Mad Max Fury Road. That's That whole movie is just action, and it's great. Yeah, I don't like Mad Max. And... <sighs> I don't care because there's, there's another action coming up. There's just, but you could oh, have, we sniping him but now. But you could have both. You could have all the action and all the character. You could get something like John Wick. John Wick is a great story. Early a great on, character. they put a puppy in your face and you connect, your soul becomes connected to the movie. Yes. We get nothing, we get no puppies in this movie. There's yeah. beats in John Wick. There's that beats he can in this breathe. too, they just suck. There's like two beats. There's like two little beats. No, when there's like more, you just don't remember them. Because there's just suck. so much action. You can't spell extraction without extra action. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he wins, but I still disagree. <laughs> Fire your sound mixer. Fire him, get him out of here. I can't hear what they're saying, but the action is all the way up. The action. <laughs> That's the action. Okay. But, oh, oh, can you hear what I'm saying? Let's, let's play a clip. killed today. Should have been my fault. No, mate, it would have been my fault. Can you hear what they're saying? No, I, I can't, can't hear what they're saying. I can hear you, but I can't hear them. Okay. I'm glad you said that because I had to put the captions on. I felt like my father, like when I was like, oh, I can't I, hear you the had to television. Put subtitles on. I had to put subtitles on. It's annoying. High five. <laughs>
<laughs> See how that high five wasn't that loud? Sound mixing. It's pretty cool how his plan to extract someone is to become a distraction for the extraction. I don't think that's cool. I disagree. Well, that's my reaction to your extraction. Oh, clever. I'm not gonna hit you, it's clever. My mom says that you need to be less aggressive towards me. <laughs> Mama says that alligators are ornery because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush. It needs humor. It's so lifeless. There's no comedy in this. I feel like it maybe was trying to be now and then, but it didn't play. The thing is, it's written by Joe Rousseau from Endgame and Civil War, and the Rousseaus were heavily involved in, in shows like Arrested Development and yeah. Community. They're, they're funny people. But this, this is just is Joe Russo. Though. This is just a solo yeah, it's for one him. of It's one of the duo. I agree. It's not funny. I think what we learned from this is that you it need two people to be a whole. You need the I duo. Want, I, COVID! 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 <laughs> Hey, Troy sneezes like a girl. And how about I pound you like a boy? That didn't come out right. There you have it, that's our score. Four agrees, two disagrees. This movie was uh, blah, blah, blah. Now let's jump into the rattle-offs and rattle some stuff off. Everything is orange. I don't believe that is how India looks. I believe the sun <laughs> is yellow and it shines yellow sunlight everywhere. Is it going for an Inception type ending? It's ambiguous and the music even sounds like Inception. Are we meant to believe that he lived? Why? Stop it. I too dove off a 300 foot cliff when I was on vacation one time, but I hit a rock. Oh, that's what's wrong with you. <laughs> Why was David Harbour in the movie? Cut him out, movie's exactly the same. He was had no setup or no payoff. Why does Chris Hemsworth sometimes have an Australian accent and sometimes have an American accent? This is the second time I've seen Thor cry. Are you crying? No. If you didn't know Sam Hargrave, this is his directorial debut. He used to be a stunt coordinator for Infinity War and Endgame. He's the MCU's stuntman. In this movie, I gotta say, it feels like the character development in this movie is a stuntman's understanding of character development. I'm taking back to Gringo, 2018. Oh Nash Egerton directed that, and he was a stuntman, but it seems like he blends all the elements in a little more coherently than Sam you're Hargrave. You're the only person who likes that movie. Just watch it. I'm not You'll laugh. No. That's it for this act. We'll be back next week talking May movie, movie preview. madness. We'll be talking about what movies are coming out next month that you can watch from the safety of your own home. Or RV. And of course, you can leave a comment. Tell us what other people or things do you want to see Chris Hemsworth extract next? I want to see him extract a pickle from a jar of pickles. That'd be very riveting, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? You gotta, you know. Got sensitive little fingers. You know, like, to open it. Mm-hmm. Bye. <laughs>